asked students and staff about the AirPod policy and how it might affect people with ADHD in the classroom, and here's what we got. There is a new policy this year, which is the AirPod policy, but why was it enforced? I think most importantly, we recognized last year that there was often times in the hallways where we were unable to communicate with kids because they couldn't hear us. It also distracted some students in class because it became an issue where they were connected to their phones that were up in the holders. Um, so ultimately, we just wanted to try to s maintain a level of communication with our kids as well as see how it worked and pilot it to start the school year, maybe eventually introducing them back like we recently have uh, at the teacher's discretion during structured class time. So it's more common that kids have them in their ears and they're used to it, but uh, for a learning environment, it can make it very difficult um, for students to hear everything that's going on, especially if it's instruction, and it can be very frustrating for our teachers who are trying to get the attention of students either in the hallways and especially in the classroom. Because too many people were using them to talk to their friends during class and to ignore the teacher. Students with ADHD can be negatively affected by the AirPod policy. People can't listen to music and usually they can't focus in class if they don't listen to music. So I find that as a negative. The AirPod policy with students with ADHD I think ultimately is a focus on whether or not they can still be able to have maintain their uh, level of communication with the teacher. I mean, I think that, number one, is what drives their attention. Um, and being able not to be distracted by music would be a level of which they would still be able to communicate and understand what is being presented in front of them as far as instructional time. Um, obviously, we know the studies show that music does help when doing unstructured time or independent learning. So that's something that we will obviously look at, you know, moving forward. Um, I think obviously students are not super pleased with it, so he, we have to hear some grumbling, which is fine. Um, and I do think, you know, maybe in some individual work or quieter settings where kids maybe want some more focus, um, sometimes you can tell maybe students that, that you can tell where that would be helpful for them. So I think that's something to consider. This shows the AirPod policy and the rules and how students with ADHD can be affected in the classroom. Our school, West Bridgewater Middle Senior High School, is special for having a morning news broadcast. People have so many different opinions on what they like in their favorite parts of the morning news. Me and my crew went and interviewed people's personal opinion on what they think about the show overall. People have different opinions on how they get their news, so my crew interviewed the West Bridgewater Middle Senior High School to get their personal opinion. It's amazing that a giant crew of students, teenagers, can get here um, at 7 o'clock in the morning and be dedicated to their particular position and uh, pull off a show every single morning. They're, I'm just thrilled at how dedicated they are to doing that. I really like it just because it's a good way to start the day and it just kind of gets my brain running. Um, I think it's really cool. I really like when students do it and I get to see a lot of my students doing it on the morning news. I like watching the students have a different personality. Like in math class, they're sometimes like, I don't want to be here. But in the news, you get to see them doing something they enjoy. People work hard for their position on the morning news. We asked some members what their first impression was. I thought it was going to be a little scary at first because it's in front of like, it's live in front of an audience, but I think I've really come to love it and it's like a part of my daily routine now. I was a little nervous and it seemed like a lot, but it's really simpler than what it is. It's a lot simpler than it really is. When I was on it, I thought it was really fun, something different I've never experienced before, so it's kind of cool to see what the kids do behind the scenes. I was a bit overwhelmed at first seeing all the different equipment that was there and seeing all the different roles but eventually as I as I was helped to know what each position does and started to get more familiar with how the morning routine works I got very comfortable with it. I was a little impressed because I've been other places and it's like, like hearing the principal just get on the news and just or on the announcements and just talk and get a little dry and just having the visual helps a little bit. Many people get involved in extracurriculars. We wanted to know what led them to join the morning news. The morning crew gets here at 7.05 or 7, and then we do a run through. We make sure everything's good, the sound, the script. We have to do a quick run through, so it maybe takes like 10 minutes to do a run through, and it's really just like to test, see if everything's working. Before we begin, we do mic checks. Um, 
and I click click all the buttons on the TriCaster to change scenes. What we try to do is we try to make sure that everything runs smoothly for the one we go live for the morning announcements. We do a run through every morning to make sure that everything in the script is okay, to make sure all the audio and video is working, and we make sure that by the time we do go live, everything runs smoothly without technical difficulties. We hustle, we work fast. As soon as that door opens up at seven o'clock, everybody pours in and everybody knows exactly what job they have to do. And there's good communication that runs throughout the morning as far as um, you know what we'll be cutting for that day or what we need to add video to. The morning news has many segments. Yes, I love Anthony and I love Rufer. So I'm gonna say Mr. Crane. Not really the announcements, it's just kind of showing up late to class. Everybody kind of nails it, and it's like a perfect show, which actually happens quite often. What celebrity's birthday is the same as whoever's birthday it is, I think that's pretty cool. I like the art at the end, that's a new thing too, I really like that. Overall, staff and students have a lot of different inputs on the morning show and how they view it. Our students love participating in the com announcements in the morning and setting up and working as a group. Our teachers love have love and have their favorite parts of the morning announcements and overall everyone loves the morning news. Students at WB can show bad or good student representation in the community. Even students can name very specific ways of bad representation. The underclassmen are typically like disrespectful and will go to different places and I mean you're still a wildcat wherever you are so they just leave a, leave a bad reputation for everybody. Just all around like just mischievous behavior around the school like like you know smoking, you know drinking, doing all of that stuff like it's just it's unnecessary, un unacceptable you know. Like being loud and like stealing and like just doing too, like just doing too much. They like go around town and like trash the place and a lot of them smoke and it like ruins our town kind of and our school. There are many examples of how students show negative behavior. How they represent themselves, I think, and carry themselves. My experience right now, it's been very positive. Can everybody in this building use a little coaching up on how to be change maybe their attitude or behavior about something? Yeah, and then me included, right? Uh, I think like for the most part, they're good. They're like good leaders, good role models and stuff. Students who represent the school poorly, it's not too late to change your behavior. So if we're not if we're not doing the right thing outside of school, then yes, it can have a negative impact and labeled as something about negative about WB. Um, but until that, those days come, what we'll do is we'll just try to continue to encourage the kids to make the right decision. Um, definitely, just the lack of respect in honestly both upperclassmen and underclassmen would just make a lot of things a lot of things better for everyone and hopefully make things run smoothly. Wow, it sure sounds like a lot of students had a lot to say about good or bad representation in the school. How do you represent the school? We have a student in the school that's interested in starting a Dungeons and Dragons club. Now, this may be a simple game, but me personally, I have seen why students should play it and its educational benefits. D&D has a lot of interesting things in this game. I think a Dungeons and Dragons club would be a great addition to our after school activities. A Dungeons and Dragons club? That's a fantastic idea. I think a, any club that uh, kids are interested in and want to participate in would be a good idea. Trying to find the right entertainment for gaming clubs is hard. d and is interesting because it has a lot of parts to it and it's a lot of imagination as well. Um, and I think it also provides kids an opportunity to um, compete at a different level. Dungeons and Dragons is interesting because it taps into the primal core of the human imagination. Legends and myths are really what make us humans. Um, build teamwork and, you know, learn rules of a game and follow those rules are all good things. 
Now to every game, there is always some knowledge to get from it. Well, critical thinking, problem solving, that's what we do on a regular basis, but it's also uh, collaborating with teammates. Sometimes in Dungeons & Dragons you can be on a team. Um, and it also provides them some structure outside of doing other activities. It provides them an opportunity to continue to use in their mind. Uh, well, of course, it's going to develop your imagination. It's going to let you be creative. And I think it's also going to let you kind of explore some of the greater legends uh, that mankind has written. And the idea of working together cooperatively um, towards a goal, the, the idea of a competitive nature, I think, can be good. There's always someone out there to make the game even more special and create memories. I started playing D&D when I was around seven, and I liked playing it because it was mainly a chill game and you can also learn uh, how to pursue which class you want. Most people are interested in a club with Dungeons and Dragons, as how I was seeing all the educational benefits and the game itself, I know others should join too. Now, I know you guys are all excited about Dungeons and Dragons, but in order to start this club, we would need an advisor, and then you guys could sign up and come. Would you like to join my club? Mm -hmm.